Hello and welcome to Console Shot episode 3-0. Can you believe that, Stu? 30 friggin' episodes. You know what? I can't, I can't believe it. When we started, I thought we'd never get past the fourth episode. So I mean, to get was... to 30, I yeah. think it's quite an achievement. One was pushing it, wasn't it, to be honest? You know, and I think that puts us up with the great um, broadcasters, oh, such YouTube. as Noel Edmonds. Yeah, Jimmy Savile. Well, actually, no. Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, whoa. Someone else. Someone else. Tony Blackburn. Pat Sharp. Uh, Dave Lee. No. Yeah, uh, this is Travis. Tony. Uh, uh, Annika Rice and. Annika Rice, yeah. I think all those. Terry Nutkin. Terry Nutkins, yeah. The Did names of you. Uh, well, I think TV is like sort of visual radio, isn't it? So yeah, no, I suppose it is actually. Yeah. Still a form of broadcasting, isn't it? Yeah, Towards yeah. Being cast, two pe- people. So yeah, episode thirty. It's uh, we had a bit of a gap, didn't we, before we kicked on to high gear with this. Uh, sort of like a second season almost, isn't it? We had a big old gap where we just didn't. Yeah, yeah because I think I think we both got such busy lives, and uh, it's just a case of. You know, Difficult. we're all going out. We, we, you know, we've got partners and you know things like that. And to get an actual hour spare to do this, sometimes it can be a little bit harder than what actually people think. It was actually uh, episode eleven where we kind of cracked on with it again, mm. and that was ten months ago um, when we did an episode on magazines, and then uh, the one before that was Gamescom, uh, which was. Which uh, it's saying it's two years ago, so I guess oh, wow. like, you know a good over a year gap mm. between them. But uh, we didn't really uh-huh. stop. Do we? Well, we stopped, but it wasn't like right. We're not doing this set anymore. We just kind of trailed off, I guess. Yeah, I think it was a little bit. I think I got a little bit sort of frustrated with the lack um, of, of, of episodes. I didn't really have the right, the right. Uh, what's it called? Like the, the right software and hardware and things. And, yeah. And now, now it seems silly. Like, oh, now I've got a headset. Now I've got a sort of a proper laptop. You've got it, it now, haven't you? Yeah, it's always sort of wired into the router. And, and before, I just found like things aren't just working well. And doing it on my iPad was okay, but it wasn't great. And I, and I think this is just—it's so much easier now. I just, you know, I've got my feet up. I'm in the spare room. Headphones on. Got clothes on this time? No, no, yeah, I had. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, um, it was funny actually, because another uh, show that I like to watch, I think we both all listen to it, we both like to do it, is the Retro Hour, and they've been on uh, Console Shop. We've got Dan yes. and Ravi on. Yes, um, yes. I'm sure they'll they be on again in the future. Good guys, really good guys. But it, they're on the last, uh, maybe not the last one, but the one before, they were talking about the fact that. I think Ravi was in London, mm. and they were lamenting the fact that there's no. I know. I heard, game shops in I, heard, I heard that, and I, I think Dan said, "You must have been incensed." So, so, some, some, someone messaged. They go. Someone messaged us, and 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 there's you know two shops in London. <laughs> I can't remember the name, and I was fucking Play Nation. It's Play Nation. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, was, I started it? shouting on the train. I was like, "It's Play Nation!" Oh my god. Pack train, you're just yelling that out, yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. And um, I think they mentioned that retro know. game base, which is the which uh, I didn't actually realise that uh, you might have mentioned it to me already, but I've forgotten that it's uh, closed now. Yeah, it's closed. I think I think they're focusing on uh, the bars they do the the four four quarters, which are both. If you get the chance to go to four quarters in Peckham or four quarters in. Uh, 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 Hackney Wick, Hackney, Hackney Wick. Wick. Um, yeah, go to them. They're both really good bars. The guys in there, you know, they know their stuff, <laughs> and they've got loads of great arcade machines in there. And you can we play. We made on... the mistake of uh, going there from Stratford, in which is uh, for those of you who don't know, is East London. Mm. But it's kind of all the way on the other side of the big shopping centre, and it's uh, um, quite a walk. I think it's one because it, we went there for the Play Nation game, sort of on no Christmas part, Christmas get together, and it was kind of it was just one of those nights where you're just walking across the Olympic Park, and it was absolutely freezing. It was just bitterly cold. It's, it's very open, isn't it? it, it was, yeah, it was really open. So Blasted. there was wind going through, and it was one of those places where it's not very well lit. <laughs> no, and it's we didn't not. really know where we were going. Oh, is this direction? But then it's really dead there as well. 
it, it, exactly. And when when with Google Maps, if if you're not looking, you know, you're not going down a street and going left and turning right, it's actually not amazingly helpful. And it sort of got us there, but we did go, we did take a few wrong turns on the way. Yeah, it's and it's it's actually a very nice park. I used to live in Stratford. Is it a very nice park during the day? Oh, I imagine it's, yeah. uh, it's a bit creepy because it's so open and there's not mm. much light and there's um there's nothing there. It's not like you know it's not a high street or anything where people are naturally going to be knocking around. There's mm. like no reason to go there at night really, unless you mm. go for a jog or something and you might bump into people that do that. But yeah, but, um, but I guess they just worked that out. Yeah, I think it was January. I think so. We <laughs> exactly. Did the Christmas party afterwards? So. Yeah, make a mega Yeah, I guess they found uh, there was more money in that then uh, than the shop. Yeah, I think because one of the guys he ran <clears throat> before Retro Game Base, he ran a sort of a company like an, a a retro games events company. So he would go to I don't know maybe corporate events, maybe people's parties, and then he'll bring lots of arcade machines, set them all up. And you know they're all be on free play or or, or whatever. And um, I thought th- I think he did things like that. So I think that's where his sort of first um, I don't know his l- first love was maybe. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know if that's the case. I don't, I don't feel like I'm speaking for them, but probably about right, I think. But yeah, yeah. Um, so they mentioned there on on the, the retro. But um, I mean they're right to a degree. There isn't really a lot. I mean we've talked about it on the podcast before, but. Um, we, uh, there was Game Focus, which was uh, Googe, near Googe Street. In, in yeah, London, that's a cracking which, shop, that was. It, it was, yeah. They had a lovely uh, set of glass cabinets in the mm. in the front. They had all kinds of, like, you know, Japanese Sega Saturn stuff and, like, you know, import stuff. Uh, and that mm. closed down about 2010, 11? Something like that. And that, that was a really good <laughs> shop, but I just I had the feeling that I can, I can imagine they're around there because it's very close to Charlotte Street and they're so, uh, such a sort of popular area now that the rent must have just gone absolutely through the roof. I reckon so. Yeah, uh, it was a nice so, location. Yeah, but I can't imagine actually they got much footfall of people looking for games. They probably got quite a lot of people who who would come there especially and, and probably spend quite a lot of money. But when, you, you know, they can't imagine the people, you know, Lunch times or on a Saturday. No, oh, okay. Let's all. That's, it's not like the local high street. It's not a casual sort of thing, time. is it? No, yeah. no. So I think the rent just knocked them out of the water a little bit, and uh, you know, fingers I crossed. Them. That's what I mean. Now, obviously, with you know, we keep talking about it all the time, but <laughs> and it probably drives you nuts. C E X. Yeah. Yes. Now they do retro. Play Nation Games does also exist, Trevor. Yeah. I've, I've heard, uh, yeah. but yeah, yeah, they they are they do retro, and there's a couple around well, there. Right. Oh, of well course not, Jenna. of course not. You got you got to put that into it. They're, they're not the as good as PlayStation body. games in Croydon. It's much better. Yes, yes. yeah, yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's one in uh, Tottenham Court Road, which is not too far from there, and you've got one at the other end of kind of near Goode Street. Mm. So if you really want retro games, and you're right there. In that yeah. area, that's basically get, the way get, get in an Uber out. and come to play Nation Games. Well said, Trevor. Well said. And uh, no, well you go to CEX and then you think, oh my God, oh, this is rubbish. Let's hey, go to a good shop. Thank you. Thank you. We, we, we know. The other CEX. Yeah. But, but yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, you're so killing me, yeah. Trevor. You're killing me. Then I'll go play Nation Games. Yeah. Where there's a cracking KFC just down the road. Yeah. That one's in that weird little cottage thing. I was quite impressed by that. Your shop impressed me as well. First time, oh, well, thank you. Of course, but, uh, the KFC was bloody good, though. I have to say, thank you. we got we got a load of American Super Nintendo games in and PAL Super Nintendo games in today. But me mentioning the fried chicken made you think, oh, American stuff. American, yeah, they're big fat games. You got what? You got American NES, SNES games in. Oh, right. oh you can't say SNES though. If you're talking about American Super Nintendo, they, oh. get, they get the arsehole. Well, don't you have to say that? Super they NES? Guess. Well, that, and I think SNES, which really S-N-E-S. irritates me. I mean, do Americans don't generally call, like, NASA. Oh, yeah, NASA, or, like, you know. Yeah, um, they, do call the, they do call that police surface for by the FBI. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's funny, there is a weird, like, there's no rule, I suppose, but SNES just seems a natural thing. When you Ooh. see it written out, yeah. you naturally want to say it like that. SNES is one syllable. S-N-E-S... 
That's four tools. That's that's four times as hard to say. Well, they do that, or they just say Super Nintendo, which is even more ridiculous. Super Nintendo. That's five syllables, that is. It's only since YouTube sort of appeared, and we've all, you know, yeah, we yeah. watch America, and it's mostly when it comes to video games, Americans, that we've become aware that they always called it the SNES or the Super NES, whereas we just always called it the SNES, which is, you know, interesting. But yeah, and they call the end, they always say, they don't say NES, do they? they always say NES. So yeah, on the NES, yeah, you've only got to watch the Angry Video Game Nerd to see that, or Pat, or Pat the NES Punk. Pat the Knobhead. Apparently, according to some people, yes. Our good friend Larry <laughs> isn't a big fan of him, is he? No, oh, Pat's all right. He's just got an opinion on everything. People <laughs> might say that I've got an opinion on everything. Yeah, you had a bit of an argument with him, didn't you? I oh, did, yeah. What? I can't even reproduction about. cartridges. Oh, yeah, reproduction cartridges. Now, I had, I, I, you know, I've, I've stated my opinion that. on reproduction cartridges. Yeah. I haven't really got a problem with them. I don't want to see people trying to do them that they're so good that they're they're gonna you know try and trick 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 shop owners like myself <laughs> but having a go at the 8-bit guy who makes absolutely cracking really good videos and he had two damaged cartridges and he and he showed you how to make um sort of homemade new labels and yeah. stick them on so so your stuff looks good again oh my god what 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 a bad guy and it was games that were like it was like bloody WrestleMania, which is WrestleMania as, and uh, Adventure. He's, he's yeah, he, he, Pitfall. Yeah, it was pit, like, Pitfall. Yeah, Pitfall. You know, I so, mean, if it was like bloody, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna rip off the what label I've got left of bloody, you know, Castlevania. Then you'd be like, oh, that's that's kind of. But you know, if the no, label no, was, broke, was like half there, the only thing I'd have a know. problem with him doing <laughs> is getting a really expensive game and. I put in the ROM onto some sort of ever drive or something, but making it look like a real car. So doing a, a, you know, almost piracy. Exactly. I, I wouldn't have, a, I, I'd be a little bit more like, oh, well, it's quite interesting that he's doing that. And it's yeah. interesting to watch the process. But no, I'm sort of against piracy. <laughs> but then um, it, on the other hand, I've, I've always said that um, I haven't got a problem with emulation. Uh, I think there's certainly a place for that. And uh, the same with repo cartridges, because a lot of the games are extremely expensive. You want to get them on the on the original hardware. Not from PlayNation games. No, no, hard. we offer fair prices yeah. every day. Well, the 8-bit guy is great, though. I mean, he's got great videos. Like, a favourite is how to conceal your handgun. Uh, you know <laughs> that was the oddest thing. He's, he's got probably, like, 200 videos. And sometimes with YouTubers, I'm sure you did the same, Trevor, is I like to go back to their original ones and say, oh, let, let's see how someone has evolved. And you exactly. go back to the original uh, 8-bit guy, and he's doing all these videos on, uh, what's it called, like the, the Apples, oh, Max, Commodores. Yeah. Yeah. You know, then it's, it's like his 10th video is how to conceal a handgun. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, like, coming, like... From, coming from the, uh, a guy from the UK, the thought that someone even has a handgun is yeah, complete is and utterly alien to me. Yeah. And then on... <laughs> tips on how to conceal it and he's he's a guy that you know he doesn't look like a guy who goes has a handgun it's... he's got a lovely little hand or big old handgun you know yeah. um, like something that Ar like something that Arnold Schwarzenegger uses in last action hero yeah handgun thing <clears throat> and he's like he's got a whacking great big mitten steel case thing with it that he keeps it in and he takes it out and the way he delivers the video is just very um, sort of like it's a casual everyday kind of thing, you know, no big deal. Um, but I, I mean, he's from Texas. Let's just put that out there. Yeah, so yeah. It's, kind it, of a, it, it's grew so up on him, that stuff. Probably all of his friends um, carry a gun because that, that's what they do. Because I don't, I don't know, crime is rampant in America. I don't, I don't know why you need it. But you know, so he, 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 to him and all his friends and other people in America, it's, it's probably very common. But you know it's the way the way he was reviewing it, it was like, oh look, I've just got a uh, a new Game Boy. Uh, what's the best way to hold a Game Boy when you're not playing it, but you're on a run? Oh, I yeah, use I use, I use this Nintendo branded holster. It, it, it was just it was silly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's interesting. But um, but yeah, we need to tell. 
Dan and Ravi that there is a shop. Uh, that I, well, oh, I'm sure well, I'm trying to refer to that. I'm, one. I'm sure they know. So they've been on the podcast with myself. So yeah, yeah. So what we're going to talk about? Uh, something yes. that me and Stu have been talking about a lot this week, and we'll talk about why. We're going to talk about one of the legends of the import scene in the UK, um, a console that not You're didn't really. About Mary Henry. Indeed. So I was going to talk about. Charlton legend Herman Horidison. Herman Horidison. The Hermanator. The Hermanator. Yeah, look that up. Everybody. I was really going to resonate with all the people that aren't into video games to listen to this. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yes, one of the legendary import systems that we mm. actually kind of got a release, but a very weird, bizarre release that we'll talk about later, yeah. but mostly didn't get it. Um, mm. And that's the PC engine. We touched upon it briefly in previous episodes. Uh, mm. But not in depth. Uh, in fact, the last episode we talked about it a little bit. Yeah. But now I'm going to talk about it a bit more. But what I'd like to know, because obviously you're not so clued up on it. You're probably just got getting into it, I think. Mm. Um, always knew about it, but not in terms of like actively getting it. Um, I think you get a, you get a few odds and ends, don't you, in your shop? Yeah, we, we don't we don't get a, <laughs> a huge amount of it because it's just one of those consoles where you, you know everyone. Well, first everyone had a, an Amiga, then maybe they had a Mega Drive and a Super Nintendo, things things like that. They were at the same time, and, and, and the NES, but the NES was not as popular here as sort of people think because a lot of people played oh, no, you know, yeah. Commodore 64s, <laughs> um, Spectrums, went on to the Amiga. Mars well, System uh, was the only console, really. Yeah, well, yeah. You know, the, you know, it wasn't Even as big was as it big, was though, yeah. in, in America. Or, well, the PC Engine was in Japan. Yeah, it was. Yeah, so it literally, uh, it came out in 1987, which is kind of mind-blowing when you think about it. So only a couple of years, well, the Famicom would have been, I think, 1983, isn't it, in, um, in Japan. But there wasn't really any competition for it. Um, mm. in those sort of up until 1987. And well, NEC... I, I would argue that the, the MSX was surely competition. But would you say that was yeah. more of a computer? More of a computer, what wasn't it, I think. I took yeah. cartridges and there's loads of different ways you could get games on it. Metal Gear is obviously started on that and, you know, Snatcher and all that sort of stuff. But in terms of a console, I think the PC Engine was the first one to come around, really, mm. um, in, in Japan. And it was actually Hudson Soft, who we think of as the guys that made Bomberman. Mm. Um, lots of games, obviously, but that's probably the, the one that comes into my head for when I think about them. They actually put together the specs for the thing for the PC engine, but they couldn't afford to to make them, you know, because they were they were a software maker. Yeah. They weren't used to making hardware. So they uh, they happened to stumble across NEC, who everybody remembers sponsored Everton during the mid nineties. You know, I was about to say that. <clears throat> That's basically their claim to fame in the UK, I think. But yeah, they, they make electro home electronics, didn't didn't they? Like appliances yeah. and TVs and you know and all kinds of things that are going. And they home. also made uh, national exhibition centres. They were Birmingham, isn't it? In Birmingham, yeah. Yeah. That's just a great, great coincidence, I think, there, with the older... I, I think it's more of a coincidence, really, than... <laughs> than a, oh, did they make that? <laughs> did you go there? Did you go in... Let's go to the exhibition centre in Birmingham. That's where they'll have PC engines in, in, in there. Yeah, there should be rows and rows of them. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they were looking to make uh, something video game related, having seen, you know... Nintendo explode with their Famicom, um, mm. but they didn't really have the know-how to, to put together one. So they joined forces with Hudson, and that's how they came out with the PC Engine. It was basically an 8-bit um, console. But with I was a very... about to ask you, can, can you explain? Because yeah. I've always heard that, oh, it's an 8-bit, eight, eight but it's as good as a 16-bit console. So w w what does that mean? So you're right, actually. It is, it's kind of, if you put them... Uh, it, it's well uh, let me start again um it's kind of considered to be part of the same generation as the super nintendo and the mega drive and that's and rightly so because um the graphic the graphical power that it has are is on on par with them really um mm. but it's got an 8-bit processor it's actually the same processor that's in the nes just sort of, sort of an accelerated version of it that hudson came up with that's like seven megahertz all um, right okay awesome super nintendo <coughs> straight away and um, about the same as a Mega Drive, in fact. Um, but it's combined with a really good 16-bit graphics chip. Um, obviously, something that the NES doesn't have at all. 
Um, so you, you basically, that's, that's why you can get graphics that are on par with a Mega Drive and a Super Nintendo. But the one big advantage it has, it has a ton of colors that it puts up on the screen. Mm. Everyone thinks of the Super Nintendo when they think of a, a console of the sort of 90s. Uh, that could do a lot of colors. Well, I think it's 256 it, uh, it could do. But the PC engine um, could put 482 on screen at once. So that's a lot more than the SNES and way, way more than the Mega Drive, which is only like 64. So you can Wrong. get really colorful, great-looking games. Um, and the first version of it, which, uh, you know, if you've ever seen a PC engine, it's um, it's an amazing little thing. It's a tiny, basically look square-shaped, but it's it's absolutely tiny. It, it can fit in the palm of your hand. Right. Okay. One of the best looking consoles you'll ever see. I think it's still mm -hmm. got the record for the smallest video games console ever. Um, there's tons of variations of it, and we'll look at those a, a little bit. But the first one was that little white box. Mm. I mean, uh, you know, if you're listening to this, do a do a search on it on Google Image Search to get to have a look at it. It's awesome. And the controller is practically as big as the unit. Um, and the games, um, which is a huge departure from like the NES, which had these big, great big cartridges, a bit smaller on the in Japan they were, but huge over here. Uh, the games come on cards, much like um, the so, Master System cards that we got. Yeah, the Hue cards. What? What? Did, oh, I was about to say, what's the Hue stand for? But then it's Hudson, right? It is indeed. Yeah, yeah. Hudson cards. It was their technology, I think, mm. and they developed it. Uh, that's why you'll see the games on the cases. They have like uh, there's there's obviously it will say Hue card and then the PC Engine logo will be on there somewhere, um, but it'll also be a little thing that says HE System, that's uh, Hudson Entertainment System, uh, which sort of thing was the code name or it was uh, what they would have called it if they were making it themselves, but they put that logo on everything. What's the I don't know if you know the answer to this, and I'm not trying to sort of trick you or anything, but because. I remember sort of being a kid and reading Meme Machines, and they always yeah. talked about the PC engine. Then in yes. my head, a PC was a big computer with a box with a big monitor on it and a keyboard. So, and then people say, "Oh yeah, it, it's really good on the PC engine." What on, on the PC? PC? <laughs> so what? What the what the, what the machine? The, you know, the processor, like the machine, the engine of it. Is, is, is that what they mean? And so I always think the PC engine is is, is a very funny name. <laughs> it is very odd, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it, I think it's derived from the fact that NEC were most famous in Japan at that in the 80s for making uh, PCs. It was oh. like they made like the PC88, I think, and they had like, like PC. Yeah, they had all these funny, funny names. <clears throat> and I think they used that. Sort of, uh, if they're going to have be associated with a computery type thing, they wanted to keep PC in there so people would see NEC and PC, even though this is a games console. So they just, I guess, they added engine to sort of differentiate it from a full blown PC. Right. Okay. That's where I think it came from. Um, they, they, they've had a very popular range of actual PCs, computers, and mm -hmm. uh, they wanted to sort of leverage their, you know, their, the, the cross market almost with the console they're bringing out with their brand recognition they had with their PC. So yeah, but yeah, very odd name. Yeah, no, it, it, it certainly is. And, um, obviously, you know, exactly what it is now. Um, but then I always got a bit confused. <laughs> I got very confused about this system. Yes. Um, it is confusing. um, because the, the sort of PC engine came out, then there's a super one. I'm just making up names in the, the turbo one. Variant. Yeah. There was, there was lots of, um, and I remember in the shop at one point, we did actually have loads of PC Engine games, maybe three, four years ago at one point. Someone brought in a big collection. Yeah, yeah. Over a period of time. Now, there was lots of um, sort of cards that you, 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 if you got the CD add-on, you would then put in a special card, and that would give you more RAM. And then there was another special card, which you put in, and you got... Yeah even more ram it was more sort of like uh updates but then those yeah. updates were included in some of the so I, I i always got confused hold on which is the good one to try and get you know yeah so we'll go through them shall we so there's that first yeah. one which is that white sort of square shaped brick that's tiny that's yes. the original mm. and that will just play the hue cards um if you don't if you don't get anything else for it but in um a year after it came out so 1988 a CD-ROM drive came out, which is amazing when you think 1988. 
It's the first console to ever have a CD attachment, mm -hmm. you know, predating the Mega CD by four years, nearly. Um, <clears throat> three years, actually. I think it was 91 it came out in Japan. Um, and uh, so you could, uh, it's like a sort of, um, well, it looks a little bit like the Mega CD and the Mega, um, the Mega CD 2 and the Mega Drive 2. They sort of sit side by side. It's like a, a unit that you plug your PC engine, the white one, into, and next to that is the CD drive, and they interface together through the unit that they both sit inside, and that gives you CD-ROM games. Um, you get a little card that you pop in the PC engine. Like it looks like it's exactly like a U card, and that has the uh, the BIOS for the CD, um, oh, to, so the PC engine can talk to the CD drive, and it has some. Um, I'm not sure if the the standard card has uh, extra RAM on it. Um, well, I'm not sure if it had a extra RAM or so or something, but it, I, I know you, you needed that to, to to of course play the better games. And some yeah, of the games, yeah. you you know, they said, "Oh, this will only work on the uh, I don't know the, the the I'm trying to look on here now that you know the Turbo Duo or or something like that." So there was that card that uh, I believe came with the with the add-on that allowed the PC Engine to boot up the CD. Mm. So you pop that in the PC Engine, turn turn it on. And you boot into the CD with this card in, in there, the system card. But then, yeah, there was there was later ones that came out, like there was a super system card, which had actually had uh, put more RAM into the combined s system. And those CD games could access that extra RAM, and you can get you know bigger sprites, more more animation, mm -hmm. longer cutscenes, and all that stuff. Um, it's not like the Mega CD though; there wasn't any extra hardware in the CD drive. That you know, uh, like the Mega CD, let, let the, the Mega Drive do like sort of a, a Mode Seven type stuff, like like the SNES. Mm. <clears throat> there wasn't actually any additional. It wasn't like an accelerator, like the Mega CD was. Um, it was just a drive, but you did get a boost from the the system card. So there was the ba the basic one that it came with, and then there was a Super System card, and there was an arcade card which had even more RAM on it. Which allows sort of Neo Geo ports to run on it. Really? Because uh, there was actually a few of those, like uh, Fatal Fury, Fatal Fury Special came out. A few others came out for the PC Engine, there, and they're really, really, really good and accurate. So that's what those cards are. They're mm. called system cards. Um, so there was that. Yeah, there was that. There's the CD-ROM add-on that came up. There's also variants of the actual base unit as well. So you've got. Um, there was there was sort of different there was the upgraded versions of the white square unit called the core graphics. There was two of them. Mm. They're basically the same hardware wise. Except they've got a black case. Uh, they're the same square shape, fit in the palm of your hand thing. Uh, both called core graphics. The main difference is they've got AV out. Okay, whereas the original yeah. PC engine is just RF, which kind of sucks. Mm. So you got an awful video signal. Obviously, in the eighties, that would have been in the early nineties. That was fine. Um, <clears throat> that was all we used. But uh, you can add something called an AV booster to the white unit that gave it composite AV. Um, and you can mod them uh, as well, but, uh, but you have to get those extra things to do that. The core graphics units, which look the same, but it's black colored, um, play the same hue cards, same system, basically. They have that built in, the composite out. So you probably want to go for one of them, the core graphics, as opposed to the original white unit because just because of the video output unless you can get a modded white one and they also work with the cd add-on they work exactly the same they fit perfectly in there They're the same shape same connector everything well you know what i've, I've bought and what i already own i've probably mentioned it on the podcast before but I, i've got a, a turbo graphics which is um oh spoiler alert it's it's the american yeah, we're gonna get one. to that Oh uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to get to anything that. else about that um, and, <laughs> I, and i've also got the oh, another teaser I've got the portable Stop one. Stop it. Stop but, teasing them. But, 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 okay, Stop. let's move on. <laughs> yeah, so... Don't show off right, so you, so you, you, you're keeping up with this, because it's, it's, it's getting complicated already, isn't it? Mm. You know, there's already three of these bloody base units and the CD add-on. They're all cross-compatible with each other. Yeah? Is that yeah. making sense now? Yeah. Yes. Cool, okay. So also, uh, the, the, the CD add-on adds the composite out as well. So if you've got the plain white unit, you pop that in the CD add-on, that actually gives you the composite out as well without having to get an extra booster thing to stick on it. So you can save yourself. And the great thing about the, the add-on, CD add-on, it powered from one power supply. So, yeah, mm -hmm. Sega, take, take note. Yeah, you don't need two of them, um, which is great. Um, so you've got those three basic units. You've got the white one and the core graphics. Um, 
Later on, you also got, uh, there was the PC Engine Shuttle, which is another um, PC Engine variation, very odd spaceship-shaped thing. Uh, but it's basically just a regular PC Engine in a slightly ugly case. Um, and it, But it doesn't, it can't be added to the CD, uh, which makes it kind of crap and a bit useless. I've seen them go for a lot on eBay, though. I don't know why. Uh, but yeah, there's the Shuttle. Ignore it. Crap. Um, and then you've got the Super Graphics. Mm-hmm. It's a very odd shaped PC engine, and it's called Super Graphics because it adds an extra 64k of video memory. Okay, and it bumps the work RAM to 32 kilobytes from 8 kilobytes. Basically, makes the graphics a bit better. Mm. And there's it has five games that make exclusive use of this. It's, <laughs> it's compatible with the regular Hue cards, but it's got five just five games that make use of the extra gear in it. Um, right. So. Uh, not, I wouldn't recommend it. Does work with a CD drive though. Uh, you have to get a particular kind of CD drive. There's a couple of variations of that as well to make things even more confusing. Uh, but yeah, so there's a Super Graphics. One of the well, I think it's there's a version of um, uh, Ghouls and Ghosts that it only works on the Super Graphics. Annoyingly, um, and I think a few of the regular Hue cards that, are, that make up this five library five game library work on the regular PC engine, but they're not as they don't have any slowdown when you play them on a super graphic because they can handle all the extra junk on the screen that's being thrown around. Um, you've also got uh, the super C D ROM add ons. You've got the regular C D ROM that I just t- talked about. There's the Super C D ROM. It's a sleeker version of that add on with the super system card built into it. So you get the extra RAM that I've talked about that you, you can get separately on the on the cards to pl- plop into the original PC engine. That's built into this one. And it's a lot sleeker because it kind of goes in onto the back of the PC engine. Mm. And it's a lot smaller. Um, so that's quite cool, actually. I, I, I'd recommend that instead of the old, the regular um, CD drive because it means you've got the system card built into it so you can play all the ones that need the super CD-ROM. And mm. games that make use of that extra RAM CD games are called Super CD-ROM games. There's regular CD-ROM games. Actually, not very many of those. Most of them are Super CD-ROM. They've got a big old logo in the corner. Um, the very famous Castlevania Dracula X PC Engine Castlevania game that's exclusive to it. That's a Super CD-ROM. But they're fairly, you know, the Super CD card's fairly common. Um, the units are fairly common, so it's not a big deal to get that. Um, then you've also got some kind of oddball ones. I mean, my personal favourite is the PC Engine GT, um, which is hey, basically... I've got, I've got a fact about that. Give us the fact. I've got one. Yay! That was the spoiler, wasn't it? That was the spoiler. There you go. I, um, Trevor <coughs> sent me an auction, uh, sent me a link to an auction, a famous auction site. Certain, yeah. yeah. Auction site. Yeah. That is a dimension, yes. Um, uh, but playing you got very games excited. are also great. <laughs> Indeed. And he said, "Oh, you got to buy this one. It, it sold, not a seed, with no batteries, and and, and the battery, the back's missing. Buy it." Oh, all right, okay. Um, so I, I got that for an absolute steal. Really sold it to you. I did, yeah. I thought, <laughs> but, but it might not work. And um, but I, I bought it anyway. Yeah. And it's sort of sitting here next to me, and I haven't really got any games to test it on. I think I might have it's one, good actually. Nick, though. I haven't got, like, scratches and crap all over no. it. It looks like someone has tried to open it at one point in the in the, in the the battery compartment. There's lots of scratches in one corner. So people are wondering what the hell it is, for starters, just before you get too excited about it, which we bloody will. Basically, yeah. it's a handheld PC engine. PC en- engine. It's called the GT. GT mm. stands for Game Tank which is quite appropriate because it's a big game old thing. Game Tank. Um, game Tank, yeah, that was the code okay. name for it. And for some reason, they kept that kind of in the name of it. But anyway, um, it's kind of form factor-wise, it's a similar orientation to the Game Boy. So mm. sort of screen above, button, and D-pad and buttons underneath. But it plays the same games as the Q cards. You can't play CD games <laughs> on it, of course. The same Hue cards as the regular PC engine. Mm. It came out in 1990. Um, which is and and it's which is amazing because never before have we had a handheld. Normally with a Game Boy, which is it's you know it's contemporary and the Game Gear as well. The Lynx, um, all these nineties, early nineties, late eighties, early nineties handhelds. You, you got it had they have had their own separate libraries because they were different hardware to the main base units that we plugged into our TVs. Like 
the Game Boy, the NES was around when the Game Boy and the Super Nintendo, when the Game Boy was popular. But um, they had, all had different games. The Game Boy had kind of baby versions of the games you'd play on your SNES and your NES, yeah. um, which was fine, you know. Um, but the PC Engine GT plays the same cards. You take, you're playing your PC Engine on your TV. You're going out. Uh, in a few minutes, you just take, your, take the card out, stick it in the back of the GT, and you can play it on the go. And it's got an amazing screen. Mm. It's got an active ma- active matrix screen um, compared to the Game Gear, which had a passive matrix screen. So you got really blurry, especially in Sonic games. Everything kind of blurs into a mess, and it's quite hard on the eyes. Don't get any of that with the PC Engine GT. The screen is like mega bright, really crisp, clear, um, and it's, it's probably what made it. It was, it was about two hundred and fifty dollars um, because there was an American version of it. We'll go into the American PC Engine stuff later, but there was an American version. That's how much it cost. Obviously, we never got it in the UK. I think it was the first PC Engine that I saw because I think um, CVG and a lot of the magazines that covered import stuff, they'd be going on about how there's this console you can play Street Fighter 2 on, a handheld console. And I was like, wow. So Street Fighter 2 in like 91, 92, that was the most advanced game kind of around, really. Wasn't it, when it came out in the arcade? And then the, yeah, you know, there was home exactly. Ports. And people don't realise that you know, back in the day, to play the same games you're playing on your TV, which look, you know, nearly as good as a Super Nintendo or Mega Drive game, and you can just take the cartridge out and pop it in to your, you know, your portable system, and it will look just as good. And you know, you can play it yeah. on the bus. That's, <laughs> uh, to be honest with you, the that hasn't happened again. I think no. I'm right in saying until the Nintendo Switch. Yeah, basically, I think because we've had that, the, that's the only Mac. system that you can sort of do the same thing with. If it, yeah. Makes sense. I mean, I mean, Sega had a go at that, didn't they? They had the Sega Nomad, um, which came yeah, out they did actually, quite, yeah, a that's very, yeah. quite a few was, years later. quite a few years later. You know, that was, okay, the Mega Drive's out. You know, we're all excited about the 32X coming out and the Mega, well, the Mega CD was already out. Yeah, and yeah. It was really, really sort of late in the day. Yeah, you couldn't say it was concurrent with the Mega Drive. It was no, right at the end of its lifespan. Yeah, that was it. Imagine, it? So imagine if the Mega, out, the Mega Drive came out, and at the same time, the, you know, the Mega Drive Portable came out, and you could just take a game from one, yeah, exactly, pop it into the other. You know, when, when you're going out, when you're going on a on a family holiday or something, um, that that would have been that was actually the same game changing. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, uh, I would argue that instead of the Mega Drive Two, they should have just brought the Nomad out, kept the original Mega Drive for those, you know, so you got mm. the the regular one, and then have this as the quote unquote Mega Drive Two, and you could like, it, I think it would it, it, it'll be expensive, mm. probably be a couple hundred quid, but you know, it's there as an option, and it would have a good lifespan. Um, mm. But yeah, that's the, been there. There was the Nomad, and now the Nintendo Switch, and I'd argue that in terms of the screen on the PC Engine GT, I don't think there was a better screen that came out until, I would say, like the GBA SP, um, when it had uh, probably even the AGS 101 GBA, because um, before then, the, most handhelds, like the other ones like the Game Gear, Lynx, uh, Neo Geo Pocket Color, um, I think in Japan you had the Wonder Swan, even though they would all use fairly cheap, you know, screens, Game Boy Color, um, and but the, the, the I mean, you could still play the PC Engine GT now. Play it now. The screen's great. I mean, people still mod them and put better screens. I guess there are better screens now, of course. But you can still use that old screen perfectly well now. Something you can't say about the other color consoles from the, that era. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's it. I mean, I mean the um... each battery is like a like a beast, though, unfortunately. Yeah, that's it. To be honest with you, I'm I'm not even interested in getting it. What I want to do is because it was sold as not working or untested, which probably means not working. So I'm going to get a power lead for it, and uh, ho- hopefully there'll be no problems with it. But um, Yeah, oh, they do know. have trouble. I mean, the, the, the typical thing is the capacitors fail, but it's a really, it's a fairly common thing that a lot of people sort of fix, mm. um, and you can replace the capacitors. Uh, plenty mm. of people do do that, so that's not a big deal. That's fairly common with handhelds. Mm. But yeah, awesome handle. Like, probably my favourite handheld ever. Um, it's even got turbo buttons on there because the normal PC Engine consoles, their controllers have built-in turbo functionality. Oh. So it's great for shooters. You can just flip a switch at the bottom there and um, have it turbo fire. 
Can you hear lots of beeping? I can't hear any beep. beeping. No, that's no. okay. Yeah, because I'll, I'll just plug my iPhone into the computer to check. I'm <laughs> hearing all the beeping. Uh, yeah, no, I can't hear any. No, I'm sorry, hopefully no one else can. Stop plugging things into your computer while, while we've. I know. Right. Uh, professional, uh, Stuart, professional. Let me see. So yeah, that's the that's the GT. Um, so, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Version. I need, I need to. I've got, I've got. I've got more questions about it, Trevor. Um, go okay. On, so on the it. side, it it seems to have a hell of a lot of inputs. So on the bottom, yes. it's got a communication port. It says COM. Is that for two player? It is indeed. Yes. And then on the left, it's got a brightness and volume, and then it's got an earphone socket. Guess what? And, that's all. and then it's earphones. Got, earphones, yeah. And then it's got a power <laughs> DC in seven volts. Yep. And then at the top, power. it's got power on and off. Then on the left side, it's got a, a tuner in and then a kind of a, a hole for something to be screwed into it. What is that? Well, it actually had a, a, a TV tuner accessory, much like the Game Gear did. Yes. Um, you could pop an, uh, a little um, dongle at the end of it. Not, mm. wasn't a big too, too, but it didn't have too much bulk to it. Um, yeah. It's already fairly, fairly bulky. Um and you could plug that in and, and basically watch TV on it. Um, obviously, it doesn't work anymore because of the analog TV signal. You can put external video signals it, into it. There's a great video where Luke Morse, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. on his PC Engine GT, pops a TV tuner on the side, and he plugs his Xbox 360 into it. Oh. And he's, he's playing Xbox 360 through the screen on the GT, which yeah. is ridiculous and totally impractical, but it does it works. You, you can do it. Yeah, no uh, reason it's why not. Cool. Quite clear and vibrant because the screen was very good. Um, so yeah, was that all? Was that all you wanted to know? Yeah, that that was it. I'm 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 fully up to speed. So yeah, that is the GT, and yeah, it plays the same games as the regular system. It is a bit bulkier. I wouldn't say it's ridiculously big. It's obviously no, a lot no, bigger no. than for, for the know, time. No, no, now. for the time it came out, it's uh, it's, it's probably. Around the same size, it's a little bit chunkier than the Game Boy, but it's got so much more yes. power. So much more power. Oh yeah, blows it out the water. Blows it out the water. So on the same level as basically a Mega Drive and a Super Nintendo in the yeah. palm of your hand. And so exactly. yeah, Street Fighter Two. There was a version of Street Fighter Two for the PC Engine. Very very good one. Uh, you can play that on your GT, which was mind blowing in 1991. Um, and you've also got the, the GT, because you know, it's got the regular library of the PC Engine. You've got, like, this Outrun came out for the PC Engine, very, a very good version of Outrun, um, nearly as good as the Mega Drive version. You've got, like, Space Harrier and loads of really good, like, Sega ports. Um, you could play all of them um, on, on the go with this. It, it was amazing. Um, so that was the GT. There's also another kind of portable one called the PC Engine LT, um, LT meaning laptop, and it's literally like a laptop. Um, you've got a fold up, um, kind of square shape, just like the original PC Engine, but mm. part of it folds up almost like the PS1 when you had the screen attached to it, but actually a yeah. lot smaller and more compact. Uh, the screen flips up, and you've got a laptop PC Engine. Um, you can actually hold it in your hand with the screen flipped up because it's got D pad and buttons built into it. Um, or you can put, plug a controller into it. It's got the ports in, in there, and you can use it. Um, it plugs into the TV as well, so you can use it as a natural, dedicated PC engine. It even works with the CD app add-on, which is amazing. So you could put all this stuff in your bag and take a PC engine around uh, with you. Well, it runs off batteries, so you can use it like a, like a GT. It's a bit chunkier than a GT, though, so it's not quite something you want to whip out on the train. Uh, but yeah, works for the CD ROM, plays all the CD ROM games and the and the view card games. Rare okay. as hen's teeth, though. No, I, I imagine. Yeah. So looking looking at the um, yeah the PC engines, uh, to, to me they all seem extra. <laughs> Before we go on to the American ones and what they were and, and yes. things like that, is they all see, it seems extremely confusing. And do you think they would have sold more? If they just came out with, you know, a PC Engine one, then maybe three or four later, yeah. years later, PC Engine two. Oh, it sounds similar to the Mega Drive, but I, I'm just. I like, think they just like the graphics, variant. There, there were some sort of... LT. Yeah. Um, then you got the GT, the portable ones, and you got CD. Then you have to have this card. Then you have to have that card. Then you have the special. I think card. just progressed. 
Yeah, I think yeah. technology has progressed, and NEC being just a, a regular consumer electronics company, they're used to making lots of variations of stuff. And when new technology yeah. became available to them, or they could reduce the parts down, basically what they kind of do a little bit now with like the Xboxes and the Playstations make smaller versions, oh, that's a little bit simpler to get because it's basically the same console shrunk down. Um, it's, just, it's just like not like that. I mean, yeah, it probably would have been a bit easier if they just had the white PC en uh, engine and that's it. And, mm -hmm. and probably the CD drive was worthwhile because it was released very early and supported all the way through, which unlike the Mega CD, and probably the GT as a companion thing, you know, I think that might, probably would have been enough on its own. Um, but that isn't the end of it with the LT. Oh, God, is there so, more? Yeah, there is. So that was very expensive. Uh, look, thousands of pounds on eBay for a decent ver uh, copy of a PC Engine LT. That's like the, the ultimate one. Mm. But you've also got ones that combine the CD add-on and the PC Engine into a single unit, kind of like a multi-mega or a CDX. Exactly. Um, they're called the PC Engine Duo. Um, so they're probably the one you want to get, really, if you're going to get any PC engine. Mm. Uh, not idiots like us that collect everything. Um, <laughs> if you want to get one that will cover you for the lot, get a PC engine duo. And there's, a, there's this had a few updates as well. There's a the first one that comes is a black unit. Looks very cool. Um, plays all the Super CD ROM games. Plays regular CD games. The cards are built in. You haven't got to pop a card in for that. And the regular Hue cards. And it's got good video output as well. I think it's just uh, composite again. Mm. Uh, you can mod them, but I actually don't mind comp composite if I'm thought if I have to use it. Um, so yeah, um, that'll play everything. Uh, there's also a Duo R, which is basically a slightly more sort of curved shape uh, to the Duo, but it's the same really. It's just in a white case. Um, I think that I, I think they're really brought out because they sort of streamline the motherboard or something. Um, but it, there's everything the Duo does. So all, basically. You could play everything on it. And then there was a Duo RX, um, which is the white Duo R that I just mentioned, but it just came with a six-button pad. don't know why they had to rebrand it with a different name, but that's it. Uh, plays all the CD games, plays the um, uh, the Hue cards. The only thing, actually, I'll say plays all the CD games. There is one final variation of these upgrade extra mm -hmm. RAM card thingies. That's the arcade card. I think you've already mentioned it, Stu. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is a separate card that you need to get for all of the consoles because none of them ever had it built in. Puts a ton of RAM into the PC engine, and there's only a handful of CD-based games that use it, and they're mostly Neo Geo ports, like your Fatal Fury and uh, I think King of Fighters and Fatal Fury Special. Make use of this arcade card. So you pop this arcade card in the Hue card slot, adds like 5, 6 mega RAM, you know, more than your average, and way more than even like a, an Amiga would have had in those days. Mm. And... Uh, and it basically allows these games to access that and give you really good Neo Geo ports. So that's okay. basically a quick run through of the Japanese ones. Talking about ports, now, uh, you didn't design the, the machine, Trevor, so I'm, I'm not going to hold you accountable for this. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you were just, you know, playing football back in uh, Essex at the, at the time. Indeed. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But what, <laughs> is, what is the reason for it? Only yeah. having one controller port because every other console had two controller ports. Um, yes. you know, the Super Nintendo, the NES, the Mars System, the you know what was it, the MK One. Yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah, it's Sega on. Mark One. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it was it was you know even my so Spectrum had two controller, really controller ports. Controller ports. The but 3DO that, had one controller port, but you could plug controllers into the controller, so it kind of. Yes, yeah, so you can sort of daisy chain, um, but this it's just literally got one controller. Yeah, and that wasn't something that go. Ah, oh, we made a mistake with the first one. Let's change it on the second one. No, yeah. they stuck with they it. Didn't. That's right. It's very odd. I don't know. Um, they I say they all had one controller port. You had to buy a multi tap. Um, and I think yeah. I read somewhere that it was the first console to have a multi tap. Um, Nintendo's four score adapter, I think, was it yeah. maybe a year later or something? Uh, but yeah, um, you had to buy a multi tap and that gave you five ports. Um, but they also, I mean, the, the pad also got upgraded. There was a two, in, in Japan, there was the regular two button pad. Mm. Um, playing Street Fighter 2 was a bit of a pain with mm. that because it was like the Mega Drive three button. You had to 
Uh, there's, there's a select and a start button on this, or select and run is what they're called on a mm. PC engine. Yeah, so run was one of the but one of the attack buttons, which is all because it's in like the an awkward position because it is really just was a, normally a start button, and you have the two other buttons. You have to hit run to flick between punches and kicks. Oh. They did release a three button pad later on, um, and then even later on than that, they released a six button pad, uh, which works for Street Fighter Two on the. Uh, PC en uh, engine, so yeah, the joypad had a bit of a fun time on on its own. But the interesting thing about the PC engine is it it, it was it was way more popular than the uh, Mega Drive. The Mega Drive in was the distant third mm. in Japan. Yeah, obviously that's weird to us because obviously the Mega Drive in the UK was basically the number one con console. Uh, mm. But in Japan, uh, the PC engine was for a while it was neck and neck with the NES. Um, I mean, the NES was already way ahead in terms of sales, but um, it wasn't until the Super Nintendo really that. Uh, sales of the PC Engine were affected. In fact, when the PC Engine came out in 87, it outsold the Famicom for a, a good few months. Mm. Uh, but it had a really good library. There's hundreds of games for it, um, and probably approaching about a 1,000 in, in Japan. Most of them, I think the CD releases, um, the ratio is sort of about 60, maybe to 70% CD, 30% mm. Q card. Um, but yeah, I mean, you've got some amazing games. There's a great port of Street Fighter 2. You've got you covered in every genre, as I said, Sega, even some Sega games are on there. Um, you've got um, you've got Bonker, uh, is the famous sort of mascot, uh, caveman platform game character that's on there. You've got RPGs, um, you've got uh, my one of my favorite scrolling beat em ups, uh, Double Dragon 2 is on, uh, there's a really good version on the, the best version of that game is on the PC Engine on, on the CD, right? Um, Castlevania, that's the most, probably the most famous, I think. Dracula X um, was an exclusive Castlevania for the PC Engine. It only came out in Japan. So, yeah, great, great um, library of games. And obviously, in the UK, we had to import them. Uh, but the magazines covered it a lot, I think, in the 90s um, because, obviously, you know, they would get their hands on them. Um, and, yeah, that's where I think people like us, obviously, we would have been kids then, so we wouldn't be able to pester our parents for probably a couple hundred quid, I would think, wouldn't it for an import place to um, sell you a PC en engine? But 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 you could do them. You could get them in in, in the UK. But you yeah. don't get them in your shop, do you? Too often. No, we've had. No. Oh, I mean, I think I told the story before, but a little while ago, some guy came in with the Super Graphics and the CD add-on, and I was oh, oh, so wow. excited. But he he didn't have. He had the wrong video lead, and he didn't have a, uh, a step-down adapter. And unfortunately, we didn't have one either in the shop. Just plug so, it in, yeah. So I, I couldn't physically test it, and it was, you know, looking on all the um, famous uh, auction sites. Okay, it's 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 not something we can. Okay, we will take a punt on that. You, you know, here's a tenner. We had, to, you know, to buy that, we'll have to give serious serious money for it. And I was yeah. a good price, you know. We, you know, went back and forward a little bit, and he was happy with the price. And then, got, all right, I've got to test it. Hold on, the video lead doesn't go in, and it's it's oh, one God. of those ones where you know someone might you know correct me here, but you know it wasn't the same as a uh, um, any other leads really that, that that I could possibly find in 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 the shop. You know, so yeah, they have the Mega Drive ones. ones. Yeah. Every, everything and then um of course with the step down adapter he did actually run home and, and get his step down adapter but then we still had the problem with the video lead so i, I couldn't test it and it also oh, had the, the castlevania game with it or on cd rom so it would have been oh, absolute, you just sat there like <laughs> an, an absolute gem but you know i'm gonna give yeah. out a lot of money it's, we, we have to make sure things, you know, work correctly, and there's no problems with them. Or we'll, we'll have to take it in as as a, oh, a faulty item, and then probably give him, you know, maybe a fifth of what it's actually worth. And well, that's fair enough. You can't test you, it, yeah. Yeah, because well, because we can't test it, so there's all this gamble there that it just just won't work, and uh, there'll be sort of yeah. major problems with it. So. It was I, I had it in my hand, but we've had PC engines in in the past. We've had the the uh, oh um, the PC engine duo. Uh, we've yeah. had a few times we've had the um, GT in a couple of times as well. We've had lots of games in, um, but it's it's really you, you know 
probably for about four or five weeks of the year, we'll have some sort of PC engine console in in in, in the shop. Uh, yeah, I think the GT is one of the more funny off the handheld variation because it's quite import friendly. Uh, yeah, but you've got slaps and batteries in, you know, um, that's probably yeah. the, uh, and uh, yeah, so that and probably the duo will be the ones you'll stumble across the most because mm-hmm. um, they're you know they're, they're quite big sellers in, in in Japan and they'll be the ones that people would be the go to models and probably maybe the original white square unit, I think. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, I didn't mention, but the shooter, if you're big into shmups. It's got like a, the, probably the best library of shmups on any console ever. Mm. Um, so yeah, you got obviously there's R type. Um, I'm a big fan of blazing lasers. Um, or yeah, gunheads. Everyone, everyone in the UK has a copy of blazing lasers. Yeah, it's great. It's yeah. actually one of the few shmups where if you die midway through a level, you can actually still carry on. You're not completely screwed, unlike you know mm. Gradius and uh, it's also a Gradius is also on there, the PCN. It's generally quite hard. Um, yeah, it's really yeah. rock hard. You can do it now when you've got save states, <laughs> cheating completely your way through it. But back in the day, it is, it, it, but it's good fun. It's just, you know, it's just one of those classic coin guzzling arcade machines that hmm. they don't adapt for a home console when you can actually spend time on it sort of thing. But yeah, um, I like shmups. So yeah, um, it's probably the best console you could ever get for, for, for shmups. That's the Japanese side of things where it was a very successful mainstream console. Um, and but uh, it also got released in the US. Um, funnily enough, so what what do you know about the US version of the well, PC actually, Engine? Well, I know a little bit more about this because I've probably for the last five, six, seven years, I've actually owned a, um, a Turbo Graphics. Yeah, exactly. And um, it's 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 an absolutely you, you know it's it's, it's a great machine. Um, I don't have it set up at the moment, but. I'd, 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 I would recommend it, but I, th- I still think I would actually go for the Japanese one. Just because yeah, there's so, right. many, so many more games for it. Yeah. So there was a, yeah, it got released in Japan as the Turbo Graphics, and um, it kind of, it basically took the original white PC engine base unit and kind of stretched out the left side of it. Mm. Um, and um, I think that to accommodate a bunch of shielding to comply with American, you know, FCC rules or something, um, and added a big old cover on the, on the extension. Trevor, don't you mean F cut rules? That's the one. That's how they would say it, isn't it? Yeah, Super yeah. NES. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, so it's a lot bigger. It's still not. It's still really small compared to like a NES. Mm. Um, and it's got the same crappy RF output, and you have to get another. Uh, it's called a turbo boost that you plug into the back that gives you the composite out but yeah it was called the turbo graphics 16 and they marketed it on the fact it has a 16-bit graphics chip and they were basically saying it was 16-bit effectively yeah uh, even then people were sort of arguing that but you know it came out it, it timing was a bit bad it came out like um 1989 so it was already a couple of years gone in in, in japan and uh i think it released around the same time as the genesis or for us the mega drive also, the Mega Drive went off to be like massive in uh, America and also the UK. Um, so the timing wasn't good. I don't think NEC didn't market it very well. It got a decent, an okay library of games. It, it got mm. many of the games on hue cards. So they you use the same hue cards. They're region locked, but uh, it was the same technology. Um, a lot of the games got brought over from Japan and you know uh, westernized with you know correct text and all that stuff. Um, but yeah. Um, it was called the Turbo Graphics 16. It also got the CD um, add-on. Mm. Um, it came out shortly after in 1990. So in the West, it was the, still the first CD-ROM add-on. Uh, a lot of games came out on uh, on the, the CD, American versions of games. Um, even Fighting Street, which is the PC Engine slash Turbo Graphics port of the first Street Fighter game. Remind me not to buy that. <laughs> yeah. It's probably if you're if you're curious, it's probably worth it for that. But that came on on the CD. Um, and it has a, yeah, it got uh, probably a couple hundred games, maybe slightly more than that um, in the US um, with the CD and the Hue card releases. Um, it also got one of the PC Engine Duo that we've already talked about that combines the CD and the PC Engine into one. It got that they got that as well, uh, but it's called the Turbo Duo um, in the US. 
good thing is the CDs are not region locked. So you could get a turbo, um, a turbo duo, and you could play the Japanese games in it, no problems at all. Not the Hue cards, you have to get a converter, which they do exist. They're quite expensive to play the Japanese Hue cards. Mm -hmm. Or a turbo EverDrive. There are EverDrives now, uh, which means it's slightly easier now to play the Japanese game on an American uh, unit. Um, but yeah, um, the Turbo Duo is very difficult to get, very expensive. You're looking for a complete inbox, you're looking at 400, 500 quid on eBay. Oh. Um, when the PC Engine Duo, which is identical, is a fraction of that on eBay, probably half the price, a couple hundred quid will get you a decent a one in good nick, probably in the box um, from Japan. And I think it's cheaper to import things from Japan than the USA if you're going to get one over here. Um, but yeah, there was the Turbo Duo, which is the american pc and engine duo and it basically stopped after that about 93 i think the, the mega drive or the genesis was obviously number one snes was obviously not far behind it and basically both of them destroyed the the turbo in america and that kind of meant we didn't really get it here although what Stuart will be able to tell us more about is we did there was there was a very was, bizarre um, release of the turbo graphics in the uk yeah, we had uh, over here. I, I meant to pick up one from a company called Telegames. Games. Yes, and at very one famous point, company. You, yeah, you could pick up. Uh, it was more a grey version of of the Turbo Graphics, and it was specially modified to work, obviously, on PAL TVs. And they had AV out, and apparently the motherboard was slightly different. So I don't quite know the reason. <laughs> I've never really got to the bottom of it. Of going, yeah, going, it's all right. Why did they make, let's say, 20,000 of these machines, release yeah. it years after they were ever released in, in America? They might have been released at, at the same time. I really don't know. I don't think they were. Yeah. Released years after. And I think it was the, I think it, from what I've read in 1990, I think they prepared, you know, mm. in the US, they often test marketed consoles before yes. they full on release them. I think they saw that a lot of people were importing PC engines into the UK and thought, you know what, let's maybe put, um, come up with a, a PAL version, mm. make a limited amount of it, and if it sells stupidly well, then maybe we'll just generally release it. Mm. But So they did that. They went to a you know, fairly decent amount of effort. They, re they redid the motherboard so it could output in PAL. Unfortunately, that means it's 50 hertz, so games are slower mm. um, in, in the UK. Um, but yeah, they've made proper little box for it that's a unique, you know, variant that it's actually got a different color. It looks like the American Turbo Graphics 16, the shape and everything. It's a slightly gray, it's more gray sh uh, shade though. Uh, the American one's just kind of black charcoal color. Mm. But but it's basically the same unit, it's just gray and the logo is a bit different. It's just called Turbo Graphics, which is what I guess they were they wanted to call it in Europe um, uh, without the 16. Um, but it plays. Uh, you can still get them mint in the box. There's like obviously there's been pallets that have been sitting around in warehouses for years, and like you say, probably a few dozen thousand maybe were actually made, and they just I guess they didn't sell. Tele games obviously has been sat on them as well. That they they have, the tele games still sell them uh, mint, um, so you can you can pick one up for like hundred quid. Um, it's the cheapest way to get um, a PC engine I think in the UK. Mm. Certainly one that's in a box mint. Um, it plays it just plays the US. Q cards. They didn't make special PAL versions of them. They're just literally the same card. Um, and so it plays all the American uh, Hue cards, which is great. And then also you can pop a Turbo EverDrive in it. The converters uh, that work on the American Turbo Graphics to play Japanese games work on the UK PAL Turbo Graphics, just with the slowdown. Which is, um, I played a few games on mine, and it's more bothersome in some games than others. Mm. Um, I tend to notice it more in the music. Like the gameplay, I can actually not so much in a game like Sonic the Hedgehog, you know, where we talked about it's like awful when it's because it's so slowed down. But um, yeah, I mean, I was playing like JJ and Jeff, which is a kind of a crappy platformer that came out for the Turbo, and that was that, that felt near pretty much the same as playing it on a because I've got um, the American version of the P. Another thing, the Americans got the PC Engine GT as well. They got their own version. Um, it's just called the Turbo. Yeah, it's called the Turbo Express. Yeah. Um, it looks identical. It's just got the Turbo Graphics lo logo on it. And it had, they had the TV tuner they got as well. And it just it plays just the American Hue cards. Uh, the converter works on it as well. Like it's quite a, a bulky and unwieldy with it. But um, 
again, Turbo. Now, now there's Turbo EverDrive. Just use that. You've got all the Japanese games on your Express. Um, and they're actually, I think they got imported a lot more than, than the GT. I think Tele Games sold. I remember reading in the CV, CVG and like, you know, Meme Machines. It always advertised the, the, the Express. That's the impression that I got. They'd be like, Turbo Express from America. It was about, two, about 300 quid. Oh, people yeah. charge for it in like a lot of 1991 money. money. A lot yeah, of people yeah. Know Which, know but it was, it was exactly these, yeah. The yeah. Issues, sorry, um, Jeff, um, I was going to say the issue I've had with yeah. the Turbo Graphics is actually getting games for it. Yes, um, because basically America, isn't it? Really, you really just don't get. You've got to go. Okay, well, I want to get a game. Um, I've got to go on eBay and I've got to buy it from America. Otherwise, oh. you're just not going to get it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would say that it's probably either slightly, che- only a little bit cheaper or about the same as Neo Geo, which is saying some- something. Mm. Obviously, you know, you've got games that are thousands of pounds on the Neo Geo for the cartridge, mm. but there's actually PC Engine games that are about the same. Like yeah. Bonk 3, uh, the platform I've quickly... Magi- magical, 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 magical Chase, yeah, they're thousands of pounds. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they go for thousands of pounds, especially the Turbo Graphics versions, which were, were made in far lower quantity. You, I mean, Magical Chase and Bonk 3 had uh, Japanese PC Engine versions. They were just ports of those. Mm. Um, and they're, they're way cheap, because obviously the PC Engine was massive in, in Japan, but um, the Turbo versions are a lot more expensive. But yeah... Um, and Even for a you know, regular ass game like Blazing Lasers, people charge like bloody twenty quid for it, you know, exactly. for a good, a decent copy. So it's expensive to collect for, and, and, Trev, and the consoles you, themselves. Go on, sorry. Did you know that there's actually came out in the UK is a, is a very rare version of Lakers versus Celtics that came out for the Turbo, <laughs> very very rare, extremely it's, it's, rare. Uh, yeah, it only ever came out in the UK. To one shop, and they sold four copies. And it's Play Nation Games. No, no, no. I made that all up. <laughs> <laughs> it came in a box that was had the Mega Drive logo on it. <laughs> yeah, you had to get an adapter to play it on the Turbo Graphics. It's like a Mega Drive shaped Q card. <laughs> we could go on with that joke, yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, it, it's hard to collect for. Yeah, I mean, you've got a handful, I think, haven't you, of games in I the shop? I've, I've got Blazing Lasers, and there's the ones I got myself: Blazing Lasers, a uh, P- Alien Crush, which is a really good pinball game. Actually, I'd recommend that. It is, yeah. And yeah. I've got Vigilante, um, and then I've got, I've got something else. I can't remember what that was though. Yeah. So basically, um, that that's it, they'll pop in. You know, you'll get a few in, in Play Nation games, but eBay is like the main route. But there's not a lot UK only. And most of the games are obviously the Japanese versions because there's way more copies of those yeah. and they were more widely imported than the American Turbo graphics. I mean, I like getting the American and the Japanese stuff because I kind of like the the terrible American artwork that they, they use. Mm. Um, and I actually like kind of the... I, I like the American unit as well. I like the Turbo. I've got the PAL version like like, like you. Um, I actually quite like the design of it. Um, yeah. So that appeals to me. Um well, I think I play the Express more because just because the games are in sixty hertz and mm. um, you know it's just more convenient for me to sit in you know um, you know in bed or you know in the living room or whatever and just play play the games on that. The screen's so good, I'm not sat there like I might be with a Game Boy or original Game Boy or a Game Boy. Oh, I'm going the screen so bad now. Um, so yeah, that, it'll probably be either be that if you can. But even even the GT and the I mean you got that bargain because it was kind of sold you know sold as seen yeah 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 um, but. A complete one. I mean, people tend to sell them with the caps already replaced. Mm. But you're looking at maybe 300 quid for like a. I mean, you know, so you've you've got that a few times, the GT in the. We've had it in a few in, times. In a, yeah. In, yeah. Seems to be the one that that and the original white unit and the and the duo and the GT are the three that seem to pop up. I think mm. the most. Um, the other ones, not so much. Um, but yeah, um, there's the PAL option as well as we've talked about. A good thing is it doesn't. It has like composite built into it. Exactly. Um, yeah, it's got that as well. Yeah, straight out the side, sort of video out, which on the American one is DRF, but we actually got a decent video signal, and it's actually quite a good signal that comes out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it depends how your how you know fussy you are about 50 hertz. Um, if you've never seen a PC engine before or a turbo graphics, you won't know. 
to, to be able to take a different a tell a difference. But I don't know if you get like blazing lasers and put it on a GT and play it on that, and then jump straight into the PAL turbo graphics. You'll definitely notice a difference there, but actually in shooters, it kind of helps that <laughs> they're a bit slower because you know they're they're so fast paced that um, it gives you a bit of a better chance, and everything's a bit a bit slower. Um, so yeah, um, you had the American Turbo Graphics, you had the original PC Engine Japanese version, as all the different variants. Um, if I was going to recommend one, I'd probably get a Japanese PC Engine Duo because they're um, very easy to, to come across and they're relatively cheap to import into the UK. Just make sure you get a step-down converter mm. uh, for, for the power. Um, and uh, either that or a GT, if you can get one, might stew did for cheap. Um, but you'd be lucky to get it under 200 quid. Uh, but, you know, I think it's worth it. Get an, and get a Turbo Everdrive from Crix. Uh, and you can lob, lob all sort of, what was it, I think there's about 500 Hue card games if you combine the US and... Mm. Japanese libraries might be a little bit less, like three hundred or something. But yeah, um, and then you've got yourself a, a really underappreciated console. And also, the great thing with the Duo is because it's got the CD drive in it, you can burn, you know, CDRs of oh, games yeah, and run yeah, them off the stick them on. Yeah, and it uh, it's region free, so also you know, you means you can play Castlevania, Dracula X. Obviously, to buy that, it's about a couple hundred quid mm. to get an actual. You don't know the CDs, like you know CD rot or something. Um, I think people do repros a bit as well. Um, but yeah, uh, you can just burn a, 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 a ISO of that and pop it in your PC Engine Duo uh, and play the best. Well, what might be the best Castlevania, in my opinion. So, so yeah, that is the PC Engine Duo, and I think we're nearly at an hour now, aren't we? We've actually gone I over an hour. I think we're just over. Yeah, just over. God, we literally needed that whole time to cover all of the variants of the PC engine. Oh, man, it's just got too many. It's just got too, it's too so many. Well, I hope it cleared it up. Do you think you know a bit more about it now? You're going to go out and get I all the I weird do. variants? I've, like, I've, got, I've got my um, PC engine GT, so I've got to get that all up and running, and I can't wait to yeah use that, because I think that would be you know quite good. I think I want to get Street Fighter, Street Fighter 2 for it. You're going to get an EverDrive? No. No, you get the real get things. It. Yeah, I get the real thing. Definitely would recommend Street Fighter too. Uh, that's not too expensive. You get about, about twenty quid. You get to pick that up for. Well, I'm looking on um, uh, a, a famous auction site, and I can get it for. Game. Yeah, uh, eleven pound plus four pound postage. From there you go. Japan. So yeah, fifteen quid, something like that. That's not bad. Yeah, very close to the Mega Drive version, uh, but in, but with actually more colours because the PC Engine had amazing colours. So yeah, mm. some of the some of the ones I'm after are a bit expensive. Are like uh, Outrun, um, mm. which is on a Hue card. That's about like what, thirty quid for a loose Hue card, and there's a, there was a Golden Axe port mm. as well. That was only on the CD though. Weirdly, um, mm. that that's also on there. Um, Double Dragon Two that I mentioned. So everyone thinks of the NES Double Dragon 2. This is a port of that, but it's like a million times better. Mm. Um, that's on CD. That's about 100 quid. Um, uh, Castlevania, as mentioned, that's about 100 quid as well. Um, but yeah, there's, there's loads of other games. Like It's got a lot of sports games that are quite good. Like I'd recommend Final Match Tennis, right. um, which is one of my favourite sports games ever. It is frigging awesome. I'd recommend that. And that is really just a tenor or something. Um, there's a whole bunch of football games that are on there. Uh, got Bomberman. Start, I think it pretty much started on the, the, the PC Engine, which would make sense because it was Hudson that you know invented the whole thing, uh, PC Engine console. Um, that's pretty cheap as well. But yeah, you're probably going to be looking at. Um, there are a few people in the UK that so much choose got a handful. I'm sure, he's going to get in more. You know, over oh, time. Yeah, more coming in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So keep pestering Stu uh, to uh, visit playing Asian games for PC and engine stuff. Um, and you got America as well. They have a lot of stuff in the turbo version. So you think you'll be able to get them from there. But I find most of the stuff that I buy is just from Japan. Um, and they're fairly quick to post as well. So uh, it seems that import tax is always cheaper from from there. So yeah, um, I'd recommend the Japanese uh, sellers on, on eBay where you can get a lot of the stuff. But to them, it's just like... It's just like, you know, they have like 10, 10 co copies of everything there because it was so common. So, yeah. All I, right. think, I think we're done now. I think we're, I think we're, we're going to fall asleep this weekend. So, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. Thinking, where can people find us? On the internet. 
Yes. Just search it. it. Just yeah, search do we need to tell anybody this? Begging Pops people to go on the stuff. Well, no. So it's no. console shop. Got no, no, no. no. If, if we stop doing this, crap the NES Punk will call us out. Well, I would love that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> he will call us out <laughs> for being... Talking of the repros. Fame hunk. Yeah. Searches yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, well, Pat, you know, if you're listening, give us a shout out. If you don't like us, that even if you yeah. don't like us, that's great. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Talk about it on, on your podcast, just how much you hate <laughs> these two English guys. Do one. Great. Yeah, we, helps you make a podcast that you won't like, and then, you know, we'll talk about it. Yes. Yeah, so. And this is. shot got that. Culture Shock got that, Rob, there. iTunes, they're on as well. Stitcher, obviously our YouTube Stitcher. channel. Um, Basically search Google for us more, and that's where we are. And of course, visit a certain shop in Croydon, where Stuart will be selling you games. Cool. All right, everybody, thank you for listening to episode 30 of the Shotcast. Uh, we'll be back again in a couple of weeks with another one. Take care, everybody. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Take it easy.